So my name is uh, Philip. I go by Flip. Um, been in the game now 22 years. So I started like when I was 10. No, I started yeah 22 years ago in real estate here in Arizona, and um, just got into rentals, got into flips. I've done over about a thousand flips now. Uh, main focus is. Um, Airbnbs for me right now. So um, when I got into real estate, I was trying to figure out a way to get away from corporate America and, um, you know, time freedom, um, just have kids and enjoy the fruits of doing real estate investing without being tied down to a job. So I'm grateful I did. Um, Hasn't always been easy, of course, 22 years. Um, we had the recession in 2008. I thought with 50 some properties we owned under house that I'd be retired, but um, lost everything except for like three properties I was able to keep. And um, you know, I didn't know what else to do, so I just kept at it. And then um, I met two women from Canada um, in 2009, so I ended up teaching Canadians how to invest in the United States and uh, did that for about three years, probably taught over 120, 130 Canadians because they had all the money and, you know, the U.S. economy didn't have any money at that time. So thankfully, I was able to stay in the real estate game and then um, maybe about Three years ago, I had some mental health issues, so now I'm a strong advocate for mental health. Uh, we just had a fundraiser, uh, which we, you were over there, Patrick, was amazing. So just um, talking more about mental health awareness, because as an entrepreneur, you got a lot of hats to wear, and uh, I got very um, depressed and anxious, so um, I pretty much checked out. I had to for about six months, and then uh, thank God I survived. And uh, so, you know, it's not always easy, but it's, it's been great. And I got help, and now I'm a mental certified behavioral health coach too, and volunteer and, and do that. So, um, but the reason I'm here is to talk about the Airbnbs, and um, it's been a real blessing. So, um, Back in 2020, I was hanging out with a buddy of mine, Sasha, and he has been into short-term rentals for about 10 years. I believe when they first started, he got involved, and uh, he wholesaled me his first deal like 12 years ago, and then it kind of came full circle where he taught me about Airbnb and got me into it, so... The first unit we bought in January of 2020, and it was already an Airbnb. It's over by Sky Harbor. It's like one of my best ones right now. It's always busy. So he's like, you got to pay retail. I'm like, I don't pay retail for anything because we've always bought wholesale, deep discount properties. And he showed me the financials, and I'm like, it makes sense. The uh, doctor and his wife owned it for about eight years, and... Um, they were going through a breakup or whatever. So we bought it for 189 January 2020. And then February, like seven days later, we had our first guest. So I knew it was real from there. Um, and then I was going to buy four others. And then the pandemic hit. So <laughs> those all got shut down. And then I didn't do anything with Airbnb until this year, um, 2021. So... We did real well. I mean, on that first one, um, you could get rents for about 1300 It's nothing special. It's two, two bedrooms, two bath, um, like 1,100 square feet. And I'm making right now probably like five, 5500 a month on that one. So it's like four times the, the rents. And it's, it's a townhome in 44th and McDowell, not too far from here. So after that, I saw it was real. I'm like, let's just convert like our rentals that we have into, um, you know, short term. Does anyone here own rentals or? 
You guys own some now? So um, for me, I had rented my, let's see, 22 years ago, I bought my first rental. So, you know, you never know what you're going to get with tenants, right? And um, I don't know what kind of issues you have with your tenants. I've had all I've had debts, I've had uh, property stress, I've had yeah. tenants. So it, you just never know what you're going to get. I've had some in Scottsdale where, like, they're solid. You interview them, and next thing you know, like six months later, they're walking out of their lease. Or we had a lady in Chandler. Um, she worked at a law firm, and I never even went over there because she always paid her rent. And then we went into the house, and it was just destroyed after, like, five years. And... Like, it was a mess. So um, I converted that one December of last year, and, I'm, I mean, that one is in a gated community. It rents for about 1800 I think I made... Like, you say 1800 come about a week? No, well, that was a long-term rental I owned in Chandler. So she was paying 1800 a month on that property. I mean, I'm getting 265 a night right now on that, so... That. So you do it by any given period the person wants. Yeah, yeah. So there's all different platforms. So you could do it on VRBO, Airbnb. There's a ton of them, but we started on Airbnb, and that's all we use right now. Two sixty-five a night. Yeah, yeah. So out of thirty days, how many nights do you typically average? I mean, so what we're seeing right now is like some insurance companies are coming to us. Some. Um, relocation service and it's amazing I, I I don't know where they get that kind of money so this person in that one right now they just upped it originally it was May 5th then they upped it to May 10th now they went through the whole month so 265 times 40 whatever that is I mean that's like well, the big thing is you've always got to furnish it for them you don't yeah, so we're learning as we go, right? So the first one was completely renovated. That was the Sky Harbor unit I bought, 189. It already was an Airbnb, so I didn't have to do anything in that one. All I had to do was put a new couch in, which was like 500 bucks. But so starting last December, I, as leases expired, I have been converting the long-term to short-term. So the Chandler one was destroyed. So I've had to renovate it. It's a 2003 build. I owned it since it's one of the few that I kept. Um, so in 2003, I um, bought that one. And so I went in there and had to put about 30000 in reno costs because she had destroyed it. So everything had to be top-notch. And then I put about 10 into decor. So it cost me about 40 grand to get that turned into a short-term rental. Um, so we're learning as we go. We're, we're finding cheaper mattresses. We're finding um, offer up. We're finding just different. Corporate renters? Um, corporate renters have been great, yeah. I mean, <sighs> Sky Harbor, they will send people there 30, 40 days to... You know, and they don't pay the bill. So, like, the, with the insurance, the insurance pays it for them. The, maybe they had a flood at their property, a fire. So they, they don't balk it. So most of my Airbnbs right now are about 220 to 265 275 a night, and they're nothing special. They're, you know, I paid for the last one in Central Phoenix. I bought it at 116900 and... You know, um, it's so your cost go up. You get four times the rent, but you've got to buy your main service or. Um, at the end of the day, there's always upfront costs, right? But this is a long term game for me. So in four years, I'll be making like six figures a month. Right now, in our fourth month, we're making about 23000 minus your expenses and everything. No, but I'm saying, I'm saying of that month, that 265 a night, how much goes to? Um, I mean, not a ton, not a ton. So we have our, if you have a mortgage, you have your mortgage expense, house cleaning. So every house cleaning is about 100 to 120 bucks. So it's very affordable house cleaning. Yeah. 
So. Okay. Does that do you know it? Anybody else? Uh, yeah. You have some I short term? I can't do short term. I did it for seven years. How did that go? I uh, It went, uh, we had, we had lived in the condo that we bought a house and we just left our old college furniture in there. And then, uh, we go on. I think the Canadians were paying like three grand a month for this condo in Chandler. Yeah. Yeah, but, but you know, as, as the market started to get saturated in like 2017 to 18, like it used to be like just a few hundred Airbnb, it was like 4,000 listings, right? Right now? In the entire complex, well, there was probably like 40 one bedroom condos all in there. It just got harder and harder to rent. It was more and more of a job. So we, we sold it off in 2018 and bought long term. But I'm in a special situation now where I'm converting one of my existing properties to short term. And just to help a friend out. And uh, when the big move out, that will be winter season, so we'll try to keep it. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely problems. We've already had someone destroy one of the units. Um, so are you just doing units? Um, yes, I'm doing both. So I have some homes. I have right now six properties. So what do you get for a house like this? Well, that's the one in Chandler I'm doing. I get 265 a night. I get 245 on the I mean, townhouse. Bed, right? Yeah, just like area, size, location. Bedroom, but bed, like the number of people that can sleep there matters a lot. Sure. Right? Like the more people that can sleep there, the more you can charge. Yeah, so that one fits about eight people. Yeah. And so we have bunk beds, and we have two bunk beds. We have a king, we have a queen, and then we have another queen. So it's 1,700 square feet, but it fits, you know, eight people. And it's in a gated community. Um, yeah, I, mean, you so. have to, I mean, the thing you have to understand is it's, our market is not like, it's not steady, right? It's winter is like this, and summer is like this. Yeah, so I haven't weathered this summer yet, but I mean... It's still, I figure on an annualized basis, it's going to blow the long-term lease amount of money I make. It's going to blow it out of the water easy. Sounds like the numbers are great, especially you can plan for special events. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and we can target certain things, too, right? I, I have someone in Old Town Scottsdale right now, and, I mean, that one works well for me. So people are like, where do you go? I... I just go where the deals are. So I try to stay under 200 on purchases. I bought one in Central Phoenix, 169. We just closed on another one by the airport for 165. So it's, it's a town home. Um, but I was always taught affordable housing uh, by my mentor. Like, so if things get bad, you could sell that one, sell that one. So. A lot more people at this level. Absolutely, yeah. So the goal is to, was to have 30 by four years, but like I got a couple guys that are mentoring me. They're like, you could get, do 30 and three, or just depends how crazy you want to get, like, um, and where to find the deals, of course, because there's a shortage of deals, but there's always deals. Were you getting money private? Um, yes. So I use... Um, I used to use Denny. I don't, I don't know where you're from, but Denny was a good friend of mine in Chandler. Then he unfortunately committed suicide. He was on that episode of American Greed. I don't know if you guys ever saw that, but Scott Minaj was a pretty shady character, and it was a sad story. This was like four and a half years ago, but anyway, um, I used private money, bank money, um, and then everything I own has just gone up. I'm not doing flips right now because equity and so personal home. Uh, community banks and then I use a group out of Scottsdale that I've been working with for like eight years. Yeah. So it's, even though there's a lot of paperwork, it's it's been good. Um, but, I mean, people keep coming here. I don't know. Are we still number one? Like, people are moving to Texas, oh, number California, two. number two. <laughs> no, I mean October is amazing and it's the best time. Chicago, wherever, like yeah. Um, so as far as where I go, like I like everywhere. I mean, um, Kyle's a buddy of mine from Fresno that 
teaches Airbnbs. I don't know if you guys know him, but um, he bought some stuff far west, and they're they're busy out there too. So, I live in Southeast Valley, so I like to buy stuff close to Chandler Gilbert. But like, I go to Tempe, Phoenix. Um, this, uh, so, how do you manage? I mean, I my daughter. She, if you guys haven't met her, you you met her and. Isaac and Courtney know her, but she's a senior in high school. Like prior to um, Airbnb, she hated what I did. She's like, your job is so boring, dad, because I've always flipped. I've done rentals. But then she heard about Airbnb and she, her ears perked up. So she met with Sasha. She met with JM, who owns a ton of units in Old Town Scottsdale and asked a lot of questions. So since she was 17, she's been managing through the app for me, so I don't, I don't want to do any customer service. So she does all that as of right now, and um, it's all you have to. We're four times super host, uh, five stars. I think we have like 50 reviews on there right now, but we're very responsive. Like if there, there's going to be problems, like any business. Super host. So that means you know people will stay at the units and they'll like rate you, give you a rating. Oh, so that's, uh, that's as high as you could go. And not... For, for, it's the Airbnb designation. It's, like yeah. it's kind of like a BLT. Yeah. And um, it, it's a two-way street. So, like, you want to be responsive. You want to take care of them. But you also get to rate them as a guest. Sure. So um, we've been fortunate, but we've had some, you know not so desirable people. One guy, after he stayed there for five days, he wanted a full refund. I'm like, we're not giving you a refund. You just stayed at a beautiful place. Everyone ranked it high except for you. So we kind of had a battle, and Airbnb fortunately took down his review and ruled for us because we were trying to do everything right. And um, so we did have that one guest destroy the Phoenix one, like 5,000 worth of damage. So I did, is there insurance for that? There's insurance, and then Airbnb has their stuff too. Um, I didn't do a police report, which, again, I'm learning. Um, always want to do a police report. We didn't. So we got about 2,500 bucks back, and it cost me like five grand because she broke TVs. She had parties, and so. You put no parties in your description? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like one guess can we bring alcohol i'm like thinking why are you asking if you can bring if you're asking we don't want you so we're like yeah exactly so we're um you know we just because noise is a problem too when you're in some of these complexes because you have neighbors below you so if people are we're like after nine there's a big fine if you're making noise otherwise don't stay here um because we don't want any issues with the neighbors you find them like it's through the app or yeah we're very upfront and they have to we have rules so they have to they read the rules when they agree to check in and terminate the agreement if you want um what do you mean i mean do they have to claim covid to stay oh she's uh, no i think he's asking if they if you find them or if you have their stay if it's like 10 days or or like um, that. we haven't had that yet. I mean, most people are good, right? Like, sure. they just want to stay at a nice, yeah. And um, so it, you got a big enough funnel, You're, even though there's all, it's a lot more than there used to be. B&Bs. Oh yeah, we're busy. It's so a huge funnel. It's a giant so platform. Wanna... Yeah, and people are Texas, like relocating from South Carolina. Oh, we're waiting for our home to close, so we need thirty days. Well. No, they end up needing 60 days, so they ask to extend. Do you have an agreement with Airbnb? Um, I mean, it's just on the app, so everything they have. So you can terminate it the next day? If they mess up or? No, no, no. I'm saying this person's ended their stay. You don't have to let Airbnb know at all. You can just say, I'm not going to do it anymore. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, the app is real easy, and they're... Um, it's it's a great platform. It's um, there was something I was going to tell you guys. Um, oh, they have their credit card on file too, in case something happens. Like, so the cleaning crew will go in there and 
oh, they peed on the couch, oh, they like left their bong, or you know, you hear all kind of crazy stories. And so if there's damage, we have a certain period to report that. And once we report it, we usually um, deal with the Airbnb customer service and they're, they're pretty good. They're, they've been responsive. So. So is there a reason why you only use the Airbnb platform? You know, it's funny because we also started VRBO, but we haven't had any hits. And we're like, okay, well, we're busy on Airbnb. So we're not really pushing VRBO. Um, so. VRBO? Vacation rent. I don't know what that stands for. By owners. So that's like the original. Right, well, I remember seeing it. So yeah, you wanted like cabins over the years, that kind of thing. VRB has been very popular for a long time before. Airbnb. And then, then, then they brought up their home away, yep. and then Airbnb started taking off on their shared home platform. And then they grew into this whole vacation home platform. Um, the one I actually used was Evolve, and um, what I did sometimes when you do the Airbnb and the VRBO, you still have to keep going in to keep your things active and keep you up at the top of the list. And I didn't have time for that stuff. But when I go to Evolve, Evolve pushes it out to Airbnb, it pushes it out to VRBO, it pushes it out to Homeaway, right. and it pushes it out to two or three other places that I had never even heard of. I think I only <coughs> got three bookings directly through Evolve. All the others came mostly from VRBO and a few from Airbnb. But that's where all my bookings were coming from, and I didn't have to touch anything. That's amazing. Yeah, so that was easy. we... Oh, sure. Uh -huh. um, where in Chandler is your property located? It's pretty far south. So, like, when I converted it, I wasn't sure if people are going to want to go that far south. So it's um, Riggs, and, Riggs Road and Cooper. Um, it's in a gated community. Uh, Intel's out there, so it's, it's growing like crazy. It's nice. I mean, I've been out there... I bought that one in 2004, I believe, 2003, and was able to keep it through the uh, crash. And then the second question is, do you have any photos you can share with us on some of your Airbnbs? Mm, on your website, I could, maybe you know, Airbnb. I have, um, I could always email you guys if you want. I, um, we're going to create a website, but we haven't yet. And, um, but are your properties up on Airbnb that you Yes. Um, I'm not very techy, but I I don't know. Do you know how to do that? Or <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I'm just um, I don't even think I have the pa I'm not good with passwords or any of that stuff. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes, yes. So that was something early on I wasn't charging enough. And then Sasha and my other mentor, he's like, if you're, if you're charging $275 a night, you could charge $275 cleaning. So I've had people stay at Chandler. Now, I used to charge 100 but now I charge $275, and I make the difference on the, the spread. I pay the cleaner like $125, but the guest pays $275. And so we're making a little extra money on there. There's all different kind of ways you can make money on Airbnb. And like, I'm like, are people going to pay that much for cleaning? But one guy stayed there one night, and his bill was like 600 bucks. So um, it's wow. interesting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, normally you go rent, you rent a room, and you pay for the rent. You don't pay for the cleaning. Yeah. So that's something that. You know, Airbnb, Airbnb you, do. you do, yeah. So when you're traveling, like, I wouldn't pay that kind of money for cleaning, but people are like, all right, well, we'll pay 275 for clean. I don't want to go it's too it's crazy. For stay, right? It's for the stay. So whether, whether they stay a month or one night, it's still going to be like 275 bucks. So some are 100. And you always play around with the numbers. I'm, I'm sure you did, too, on your... I did not charge a cleaning fee. Oh, you didn't? Okay. okay. And most people do. Most people will be respectable and clean, but then there's a few people that just, like, I yeah. What's well, reading the people? Do you look at amenities when you buy? I'm not sure what that means. Amen. Really oh, pool. So our most recent one, we don't have a pool, so we're going to see how that's going to play out. But um, 
I think we're going to hopefully business travel will pick back up. This one's by the airport, and um, there's no pool there. But you're getting units that have access to. This one doesn't, which I was surprised. I was before that, that was your All, well, the Chandler home doesn't. Like, yeah, I mean, people want to, and we, one of the common questions is the pool heated. I'm like, well, it's summertime. <laughs> like, <laughs> some people still ask that question, but, um, you know, most pools in Arizona aren't heated. Um, but all the condos, townhomes, for the most part, when they were built, 60s, 70s, 80s, they have pools. And um, we have a unit that doesn't have a laundry room, so we're going to um, see how that one works. It's a newer one, and most of our units have laundry inside. This one is downstairs, so we're, we're just trying and seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. Is your goal to convert all of your rentals to the short term? Yes, yeah, as tenants move out. So there was another one we did in Glendale, um, 43rd in... Maryland, 43rd Avenue in Maryland, not like the best area, but I paid 44000 for it back in the days. So I bought that one in 2014, so I've owned it for seven years, and uh, 44000 I paid, it's worth like 200000 right now, because it's just, it's a three-bedroom, two-bath, townhouse, um, and I, everyone's like, what's, what if you don't have anyone come stay there? Well, I mean, what's the worst thing? I could always turn it back into a rental. So that one's about 200 bucks a night. And um, you're all spread out. I'm spread out, um, but I never go to the properties anymore. So I shouldn't say I don't go to them. Once I fix them, yeah. I'm out of there. So my goal is to collect them. So they call you to say my cleaner's not working. What do you do? Call the house cleaner. Like, yeah, your housekeeper about there. She um, so that's a big part of your team is your cleaning staff because they're kind of your eyes and ears. So like, I've had the same one since I started, um, and we're growing. So you know, you evolve and you change. But she's she's been good and worked with us. But we're always looking to grow, and um, you know, you really count on the house staff to. Because I don't want to go every, you know. When our biggest challenge was the amount of time. Like the tenant was like, oh, the air filter looks dirty. My husband has asthma. Like, what do you do? You get your car, even though your air filter was changed last week, right? You can't, because you live and die by these reviews. You do. You do. And you can't please everyone, right? So you just got to do the best you can and, like, be responsive and respectful. Um, And that's that's what we try to do. When who goes in the new t- new guests? Yeah. No, I I don't walk them. I'm I'm trying to acquire property. My goal is to be on acquisitions and look so at. You have them take photos, like- yes. So the house staff takes photos and sends them to my daughter, oh, I see. and then she sees. And then the new tenant is supposed to take photos if there's anything nice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if they see something. So they'll call you. <laughs> yeah, and really, again, the house staff is just the biggest key to sure. the team because if they go in and clean and it's not 100%, then we got a problem. Like, one time, I think she forgot to clean or something, and then the guest showed up, and that was a nightmare. So I had to think, you know, what do we do? So I transitioned the guest to another property, which was more expensive and nicer to save the the guest because she drove drove all the way from Vegas and she was just hot like you know I came and nothing's clean and so I I had to transition put her in another spot and she loved it at the end of the day we saved it but like sometimes you got to figure those things out um so look uh, this was a simple question that was asked but I think if you could um explain your check-in process so the people have made their reservations they're going to arrive at your property, what is your check-in process? You have your house, your place is all cleaned up, do you leave any kind of a welcome basket for them? Do you leave any kind of a instruction book with Wi-Fi codes and um, things to do in the neighborhood where the nearest grocery store is? How does a tenant actually get into the building? Do you use lockboxes or key codes? Or- so, explain that whole yeah, that... 
it's a learning process for us. Um, so we're getting better. So when they book, Kayla, my daughter, sends them the check-in instructions. So for every u- unit, excuse me, we have a electronic code box which she changes um, changes electronically. So it's connected to the Wi-Fi. And then, so the guests will not always, like, so Bob comes on Monday, we don't want to have Susie have the same code, so it's always changed. But also, we keep a contractor box there in case the Wi-Fi goes out, which has happened before. So instead of us running out to Scottsdale from, like, Chandler at 10 at night, we have a backup key in a contractor lockbox. It's just a trick that we didn't know early on, so, because things always can happen, right? So Kayla sends that instruction um, manual as soon as they book with us. And then um, Courtney back there is making the areas to go visit, you know, so um, they come to 44th and McDowell. There's restaurants here. What do you go do in town? So we want to have a nice, like, six-page, eight-page booklet of activities, things in the neighborhood, um, grocery stores, restaurants, things like that. So we're, we're making those slowly as we grow. Um, but as a guest, those are nice to have. And then also we want to get like a guest book where they will write you know, things that they liked about the house and um, things of that nature. So we're up to six. We just closed on six um, two days ago. Courtney and I and Isaac, I think, is going to help us on Friday. We, we bought all the decor. We get a U-Haul, and we lift it all, and wow. we'll be over there moving Friday, Saturday. Um, and, and again, we're getting better like at cost savings like because that's a big expense, right? So whether I spend five grand, which I think we're spending on this new one for decor, or 12 grand, like in the beginning, I'm like, just buy that, buy that, but we're learning on where to shop and stuff like that because everything adds up at the end of the day. So we get mattresses now for like 200 bucks, brand new. Uh, We found a great connection for mattresses. Um, We do a lot of Costco shopping. Big Lots has nice furniture. Um, So yeah, and um, instead of one, instead of, trips back and forth with the truck. We buy the U-Haul, we're there and take it and haul everything that day. And, you know, it's, we're getting streamlined because the goal is, was eight, but I, we're going to hit 10 this year, um, short term. Uh, we may do, hopefully do an Airstream. That'd be kind of a bohemian type of a deal there, but we're looking at doing an Airstream. Um, Yeah, <laughs> backyard. Wow. Yeah, so. Yeah, on the on the back. Oh wow! You got a couple houses with detached garages. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So how long do they stay? What's the average? Do they stay a month or just a week, a couple of days? Um, I mean that one in Chandler, like. That's a family neighborhood, so a lot of those folks are staying 30, 40 days. And um, Scottsdale is more of a, a party place, old town, so you have like three days here, like four days. Um, Sky Harbor, sometimes that's a month, and those are the best. I mean, well, she's a straight A student, so she's school is first, but like, um, you know, she's. She's very detailed and thorough. Um, so, I mean, she's just responsive. So, like, right away she has to accept. Sometimes you have to accept the reservation, and sometimes it automatically accepts the way she's got the app set up. But, you know, we'll see how university goes next year because she's been a so giant help. a lot of it's controlled with the one software. Yep, yep, on her phone. She does it all through the app on the phone. And... Um, you know, when there's problems, we talk about it, how to respond and stuff like that. So, again, um, and then the other part I was going to mention is the accounting. We're, 
getting all that set up because at the end of the year, you got all this money coming in, going out. So we were able to um, get referred to this company called Bench Accounting. And um, it's a um, company based out of Canada. I don't know if you've ever used them, but they're amazing. Um, three of my friends had referred us to them. And the, the big part of their accounting service is Airbnb short-term rentals. So they have all the reports, so at the end of the year, we just hand it off to the CPA, and you know we're not trying to figure out the numbers. And um, it's about three hundred and thirty bucks a month for them to to do everything. They have access to the bank accounts, and um, you know that's a. Overall, is it for the amount of units you have? It's up to ten units. They charge you three thirty a month, and then after ten, you have to set up another account with them. They pay them, yes. So uh, the other long-term rentals, like I pay the TPT taxes, but Airbnb handles that, right? The, and they give you a recording of that, or you just assume they're doing it correctly? Just assume they're doing it correctly. Yeah, again, I only had that one last year, um, and then we're up, we have five that we started this year, so um, we're, we're moving forward. So no one would like to know if it is a good idea to rent apartments as Airbnbs, if he owns apartments. Um, now, is he going to be the owner? Is he going to sublease? Because what there, there's, there's Airbnb arbitrage. I don't know if you guys have heard of that, where you go in and you're not actually the owner. You just control the, the building, and then you, you're subleasing. So I don't know if he's <coughs> talking about... I know in my leases, I have that, you know, you're not allowed to. To sublease? Explicit, yeah, that you can't sublease, you can't use short-term rentals, you cannot use the Airbnb, the RBO, etc. Yeah, I personally like to control the property, so I want to be the owner, because you get the appreciation, the tax benefits, but some people are getting, like, I know a younger, two younger guys in San Diego, they built up a giant business through subleasing. So there's different ways to do it. Um, yeah, I mean, some of the, I don't know if he's talking about condos or what exactly I'm he's. I'm going to unmute so he can ask the question directly. Here it goes. Okay, go ahead, Noah. Yes, yeah, so I'm just looking for, you know, a foot in the door basically to, to get a start in it. So I planned on possibly, you know, renting property in, in the Westgate area, the, the apartments over there. I heard on YouTube people do apartments for Airbnb. Absolutely, the, yeah. Rent, rental arbitrage, you know, they, they basically give, you know, either the owner or the manager, you know, the security that they'll take care of it as if it's their pro property. So what, what would be the best way... To, to go about that. I mean, definitely get your contracts in order and make sure you're, they're tight because um, you're, you're leasing from someone else and then you want to be protected, right? So um, I would definitely get a good attorney. I talked to Andy Hall and Denise Holliday. I've been using them for 20 some years and um, they could probably direct you on your contracts because I, I, I know... Arbitrage is a great way to get your foot in the door, Noah, but you have to um, do it the right way. You don't want to get any issues legally, so I would definitely have your contracts airtight and pay up front to make sure you had them you know, good. But arbitrage, we talked about that too because you could grow very quickly without a ton of your own money. Right. And like you said, great way to get your foot in the door. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you have something, Patrick? Good. You're good? Yeah, I've got something. Like, oh, go ahead. Uh, you know, costs, like the unknown costs or the, the hard <coughs> costs, like Wi-Fi, utilities, the, you know, the things outside of cleaning and the Airbnb fees or are you, uh, yeah, I mean, I was a little scared of that. Like, what is Airbnb going to charge me? So they, 
charge, like they don't charge a ton, like um, 3%. So say I take a reservation for, you know, um, 300 bucks or whatever, they charge 3% and that just comes out of what I get. So I also love waking up to the money in the bank account. Like, I mean, when you're waking up to five grand and, you know, that's pretty nice. So it hits you first. So they book for a month. Do you get the $5,000 first night? Um, it, it takes, they say like seven days, but usually Airbnb puts the money in the account like two days or three days or whatever. So, so all the guests are at your place and you've already received the money. Right? You've already received the money. And I love hearing that Airbnb chime. Like it makes a noise. Like when someone books your place, like I think Patrick heard me that night. He was over at the house. Like it on the cell phone, it notifies you when someone books your place. So it's like, all right. Yeah, but, I mean, Airbnb charges the, the guests more, right? Oh, yeah. So, so the, the, there, the, the guest is, okay. and we see what the guest is paying. So, um, yeah, the guest gets a fee tacked on what they pay us. So there's, there's a fee that Airbnb will charge the guest. I've never stayed, personally, I have not stayed in an Airbnb yet. <laughs> but I will soon. Because, I mean, the benefit, again, they could bring six people. You could split, like I think Isaac went up to Sedona. Like, you split it with ten people, and now you got a great big place for, I don't know, you know, reasonable cost. So Airbnb is here to stay. Um, I, I just, you know, I love the passive income without having to, once you set it up, I mean, there's still going to be maintenance and stuff you have to do, but, like, it seems to run pretty smoothly um, by itself. And you're not having to get a tenant every year because, I mean, most of my leases were, like, all of them I've done over the years are one-year lease. They may or may not renew. They may transfer jobs. They may get divorced. You know, there's all kind of variables with long-term leases. Um, so it just made better sense for me personally to do the short-term rentals. What about, uh, like, the unknown? What are the, some of the items or issues that you had? And you're like, wow, I didn't expect that or no clue or... You know. Um, I mean, one thing we're trying to figure out is the air condition cost, especially in the summertime, right? So I got to do some research on, you know, how to, I, I don't know, like, because people could crank the AC down and all of a sudden you got, with the, yeah, so those are some unknowns that I'm trying to figure out. Um, I've used Cox Cable for everything. We do like two streamers. We do a couple TVs. We do Cox Internet. So I think that's running like 80, 90 bucks per unit. Okay. You could estimate what the cost should be, and then you could have the tenant agree to if it's over 40% over that. I think there's some kind of system where you can control the yeah, AC. You get a smart thermometer, you could probably play with it. Yeah. Can't set it any lower than 62 degrees. See, you're not gonna put it on the six one and the doors are windows open. Right. I think you can set it any higher than Yeah, because they're still comfortable when they're going there, but they're not like cranking it all the way down. So, so they can crank it down and I can still say, hey, it's Arizona, it's 60 degrees in your place, it freezes 120 outside. You just got it 80 degrees down. You did pretty good. Right. <laughs> yeah, so that's something I gotta fi fix. But I don't ever do that to them. If they leave it on when they go out, I'm not I just mean like the, the days that nobody's renting from you. you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The they so out, I check it in and I crank it up. That was the other thing, Courtney, and I saw like the housekeeper was leaving the TV, the AC on. We're like, what? We got to turn these things off. If no one's here, like we can't be paying that kind of money for no one being here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, what other charges like um, I used to be worried about HOAs like buying in HOAs but yeah so, 
I, I don't say anything, and if they, like... Exactly. Then you're toast, and then you have to figure out which way to go. And Chatty Cathy with the board of directors about. Oh, yeah. I, I try to keep quiet, but sometimes there's Chatty Cathy and. Question? What's the process when somebody needs? Do you just get a notification and then do you just call a housekeeper yourself? Or? Um, yeah, so Kayla does that too for us. So when someone checks out, we already know check in is at like. Um, Three o'clock. It's like a hotel. So check-ins at three, check-outs at ten. So she'll have the schedule to the house cleaner. You know, these four units are checking out today. Someone's checking in. Um, but we're getting, we're bringing on another house cleaning crew because as we grow, you know, we because cleaning is very important to keep people in the units. So. Um, But I also have to ring a doorbell. So they text me when they're leaving, and if my doorbell thing hasn't gone off, I know they have it actually gone. Oh. Yeah. So if my doorbell rings at 6 in the morning, and I get a text from them at 7 o'clock, it says, oh, we left early. I hope you don't mind. I know that that was them leaving. So I don't respond on them, but it's a nice notification. But yet, you know, you didn't actually leave. So yeah. I'm sending somebody over there about an hour to start cleaning, and I'm surprised you just got busted. Yeah, yeah, you never know. And yeah, um, we like welcome them to make sure they're checked in. And if we don't hear back, we're like, hmm, when did they check in? And then we got the code too. So Kayla sees when people electronically check in. So most people will say, hey, we made it safe. And, you know, want to see if everything's good. Do you need anything? And then they tell us usually when they leave to thank you for everything and vice versa. Not yet. No, we haven't done any cameras. I, I think you could have them outside, but, outside, but not, inside. not inside. But um, we really yeah, have. Okay. You could see they left. Yeah. Um, that's right. Yeah, and I'm not gonna baby like. Yeah. But I just listen to the chime ding, somebody's gone. I'm happy. Yeah. And if you answer your question on cleaning, you have to schedule your cleaners like well ahead. But you've got that schedule. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but sometimes they throw you a curveball and they say, we're running late, can we stay extra two hours? It happens, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Can we, and sometimes you just gotta say, no, we have a guest checking in, the cleaning crew is going, but we, we try to accommodate, but sometimes it just doesn't work. No, I I would never want my cleaning lady there when someone's there. It's just this like, I I don't want to go there. I don't want to see the. I don't talk to any of the guests. Like I I, we do the stuff on the app, but like, sure. I I prefer not to be there or have anyone there because they go for privacy and you know. Um. <laughs> We we researched it. We researched like management companies. I think twelve. Like a lot of them are twelve or twenty. Per, oh, like okay. some crazy okay. numbers. Yeah. I'm like yeah, how? Some are up to thirty five. The guys I have here were doing thirty five percent for management. Oh yeah. I mean, they so they're making a killing. Maybe we should get in the management business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, uh, Kyle does that from Fresno, so he, that's what he does. He does. He's very successful in California, but now he has uh, Airbnbs here, but they're not all his. He'll manage them for other investors because he's got a process. Well, management is involved. I mean, you have to clean uh, well, you know, his daughter's doing the, there's, uh, well, hospitality. hospitality. You know, is this located near the stadium? Is this part you get of questions. You get, yeah. like... You know, they want to know about this, that, and they can't see the address before they rent it. So, you know, if you are coming to travel for North Scottsdale, 
Yeah. Exactly. So what's the cross streets? They may ask that because they don't see. Oh, you can't put that in the ad? You don't want them to know. What's there by? Yeah. Right. You don't want them to know the cross streets? I don't think so, yeah. It just says privacy is your property. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had, I rented one in Irvine, and the lady texted me like the morning of, like, oh, the, the address that, or the picture on the map you see, that's not where the property is. It's actually oh. like this other complex four blocks away. But because of the HOA that doesn't allow short term rentals, they've been kind of sneakily doing it. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Which, I mean, it turns out fine. It was a nice yeah, place, we're watching it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so that's her way of getting around it. Was, yeah, because some HOAs will only allow a minimum of three, 30 days or three months. Yeah. No, like, for whatever reason. I mean, yeah. I don't know. And then there's some apartments that, like, the entire complex, they have set aside units. So you can't even advertise in those apartments, I believe. Have you seen those? I I haven't yet, no. So it's like the, the, the entire part of the company may set aside 10% for short term. And if they do that, you can't even list your listing there. You know. So eventually we may try some other apps, but for now, um, if, it's if it's working and it's not a headache and... You know, we're just going to stick to keep it simple. Like, we're not trying to be rocket science. We just want to chug along and keep things simple and straight. And How much do you pay your daughter? To, no, I should. I she. I, I pay her every week, um, and yeah, that it saves me money, but it helps her. So. Like, I was paying her per unit, but now it's just a flat fee. Um, So I'm trying to figure it out as we grow because there's more work involved as we grow, and she's going to be off to university soon, too, so I don't know how much time she's going to have. That's the point, right? Like, probably 10%, yeah. Yeah. I would think so, yeah. I mean, that's kind of, that's the lower going rate of all who I've interviewed is a national company, so they you know offset their costs by having management over so many units. And, and I've interviewed quite a few other groups, and it's like wild, yeah. you know, fifteen to thirty-five percent. Yeah. yeah, and realtors are getting into it too, and they right. want twenty percent. I'm like, I yeah. like I can't give you that much money. No. Like, I forget who explained it to me. The velocity of money is like incredible for um, short-term versus long-term. So that's really was attractive when I heard, like, the money, the velocity. So it's three times, four times, like, but there's some upfront costs, of course, but, like, like it's the test, the process has been fairly smooth um, as far as validating what they were saying. Yeah, yeah. And um, again, what's the worst thing that could happen if your Airbnb doesn't get rented? You could always convert it back to a long-term rental. Like, we didn't know about Glendale. We're like, hmm, is this area kind of a little shady? <laughs> a little, but it's, it's been so, fine. So, so with me anyway, I always thought pools were not necessarily a good thing for having a single family. Well, with this, it sounds like you would be better. You think it's a big deal? Or? People coming to Arizona like to have swim, like like to even if they only use it a couple times, they, they want to be in the pool, the jacuzzi. Sure. Um, you know, I think it's... So you've got properties without pools, and this is a good thing. I wouldn't say it's not a good thing, because, I mean, we bought that one recently without a pool, so I feel like it's just going to attract different... Um, Person, type of person, maybe a business traveler that's in meetings all day and they just want somewhere nice to sleep. Yeah, so. I think it's a non-starter because uh, I've used Airbnb in Las Vegas and uh, Lake Tahoe and different places like that with cabins. And I think only one Airbnb that I've ever stayed in had a pool. I didn't use those there first. Yeah, because. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, you don't need a pool. You don't. You don't. So the one in Chandler that kills it for us, no pool. It's a very small backyard, but it's got 
tons of walking trails, it's gated, it's got a green belt, like it's got plenty of space for dogs to walk, and it's a nice, nice community out there in Riggs and Cooper. Anyone else have any other questions for uh, Philip? All right, man. Well, All right, well, if you guys are on Instagram, I'm on Instagram now. I think that's where we met, right? <laughs>